Today I am sharing with you my three favourite ways to start a painting. If you've been looking for a little helping hand just to get you going, to get the ball rolling and begin, then stay tuned. And if you've been looking for ways to begin a painting that helps you really relax and enjoy the process and stay nice and loose, then I hope that these ideas and starting points help you. If you've been putting off actually starting your painting, why not go and grab a cup of tea or coffee and your materials and start one with me right now in this video. The three different starting points I'll be sharing with you explore ways to begin a painting all the way from something semi-realistic right the way over to something completely abstracted. And in the first half of this video, I'll be demonstrating for you these three different starting points. And then in the second half of this video, I'm going to be developing out these paintings. If you're new to this channel, hello and a really warm welcome. My name is Orla and I'm an artist and illustrator inspired by nature and landscape. All of the paintings I'm working on today have been inspired by a recent research trip to Scotland's west coast. When I was there, I took a series of film photographs and it's these photos which I'm going to be using as my source of inspiration and reference point for all of the paintings that you see today. Our first demonstration is going to be all about ways to begin a semi-literal painting. I love to use this approach when I know that the end result, the end painting that I want, is going to have a distinct reference to, in my case, a landscape, a place enough for the viewer to go, oh, it could be there, but it's still a very loose, gestural, expressive painting. And the reason that I like to start out with this approach is because it gives me a bit of a framework and a little bit of a structure to work within. To start out, all you'll need is a piece of paper and what I love to use for this is willow charcoal, or at the moment, I've just rediscovered my charcoal pencils. So I'm going to be using, combining those two together, just on my paper. If you'd like to learn more about ways to gesturally and loosely capture the landscape in expressive drawings like the one I'm doing on screen right now, I'm actually hosting a free workshop. It's going to be held online via Zoom through my Patreon page, the Outdoor Sketchbook Collective. If you'd like to join us for this free workshop, all you need to do is sign up as a free member to my Patreon page and I will leave a link in the video description down below. It would be lovely to see you there and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you my favourite ways of sketching outside, of simplifying reference imagery and just capturing really loose and relaxed drawings in a playful way. All right, so the second way that I might begin a painting is with colour, just jumping straight in the deep end with the paints. And I love to do this because it stops me from overthinking too much and also colour is just such a joyous thing to work with. So having that as my focus point at the beginning really helps me just relax into the process and have fun with the materials. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to be using acrylic paints because that's my favourite. I should also say that this second approach is taking one step more towards abstraction than this one. So this one is a pretty realistic um, interpretation of my reference image and now I'm going to take one, one step removed from that. And I'm going to use the same subject matter, the same image to work from so that you can see the difference in how these starting approaches actually work. All right, so I'm just gonna grab my paints. Give me two seconds. <laughs> 
Option two is a really nice fun one and simply all it is is simplifying our photograph or our reference down into big blocky shapes. You might want to also try this with a big brush like I'm doing because it stops you from getting too het up in any detail. And the only objective is to find all of the shapes in our photograph and paint them out in the colours that we want to use on the page. I have just spent the last 20 minutes or so just marking out these colour blocking areas and this is where I'm at right now with it. If I hold these two up next to each other so you can see some of the similarities and also the differences of these two approaches. That first one is very much like line heavy, line focused, trying to mark out the composition and make that yeah make that compositional plan I would say that that one is great for that and this one is marking out the colors and marking out the values whilst this one is still marking out the values um, we're getting the lights and the darks we are also exploring that in this but through color and this one you'll be able to see against this is even looser and part of that is because I've used a really, really big brush, so I can't get lots of detail in. It's physically impossible with a huge brush um, at this size of painting. And that is a like top tip for listening up if you're wanting to do that. And that's a really fun way to start a painting because you get quite a lot of development quite quickly, just simply marking out where the colors are um, and marking out where the lights and darks of those colors are too. So that's one and two demonstrated and let's move on to the third and final one. Okay, we're on to the third and final and I have saved my favourite, potentially favourite for last because it is the most playful approach and it's also the most abstract approach as well to starting a painting. On that note, I'm gonna have my reference image. It's just gonna be in the room, it's off to the side, so I'm not really gonna be looking at it. Although I have warmed up through the last two exercises today, so I do have a good sense of that picture in my head. This exercise or approach, or whatever you wanna call it, is all about play. We are going to really just be leaning into the materials and the processes and just getting something down on the page. It might not at all reference your inspiration. It might just be, I really like that color, I wanna use that today, bung that down on the page. This is, a, I suppose, just a good way to get started if you A, have no idea what to paint, B, you just don't want to make decisions. This is just get something down and then you can problem solve your way out of it. It's kind of like a fancy underpainting, if you want to call it that. It's like a base layer, which probably will get completely obscured, but you've started, and that is often the hardest bit, right? It's like getting over that hurdle, just beginning. With all of that said, I'm gonna continue using the colors which I've mixed because it's on my brushes and I've got it out on my palette. So the colors from this, I'll probably add in some more and I'm going to expand some of the tools that I'm using so far. I've just used these two brushes um, I'm going to get some cloths out, maybe a sponge. I've got this larger brush. So I'm going to play with different materials, play with different colours and just fill the page. Okay, let's do it.
there you have my three favourite, at least current favourite ways to start paintings. And welcome to part two of this video. From now on, I'm going to be developing these paintings out so that you can see a little bit of that process and excitingly see them completed, see the finished results, see how these starting points have evolved into what I would say was a finished painting. And while I do all of that painting development work, I'm going to be responding to a couple of questions which I've been left through comments across various YouTube videos in the past. So stick around for this second half and to see the exciting grand reveal of how these paintings have evolved and developed. The first question I wanted to answer in this video was, do you have any tips for transitioning to work on bigger pieces? I have a great sketchbook practice and I want to work bigger on canvas, but I'm finding that daunting. I would say you are definitely not alone. Changing scale in our artwork is probably one of the most challenging things as we're developing. And sometimes people find it harder to go smaller and sometimes people find it harder to go bigger. Either way, I think if we break things back down, my favorite tip for this is to consider the scale of everything. My favorite tip for practicing scale is to simplify things back down to mark making. By this, I just mean making lines, scribbles, different textures with our tools. But what we need to do is scale up our brushes we need to use more paint and we need to use a larger surface. This might mean use really cheap paints like poster paint or something, get some really large hardware store brushes and get some wallpaper lining or some large paper, which is really cheap. This way, we're gonna be able to use their tools and start to scale up our marks, make really big movements, use more paint and not worry about using more paint and practice using these larger tools. And you've got to practice just how these brushes move, how you can control them in, in this new way. So I would say definitely don't expect yourself to automatically be able to do this. It's something which needs practice and make things easy for yourself and scale up your mark making before you dive into trying out paintings. Changing scale is such a common question that I'm going to be building out some resources over on Patreon. So stay tuned, changing scale is something which is coming very soon to those tutorials on Patreon. Question two is a really, really good one and I have re-recorded and re-recorded my answer to this because I cannot get it concise enough for you. <laughs> this question could be an entire video of itself. Question two is, what were the moments before it finally clicked that this is who you are as an artist and these are the things that you create? This is such a hard question to answer because I feel like I never fully land or anyone really fully lands at figuring themselves out fully as an artist and landing solidly on the things that you create. Because I think everyone always wants to be doing more and other things as well as what they're doing currently. So it's always evolving. However, there have been a couple of little moments which have helped along the way, which I really look back and see as markers of things clicking into place. The first one was being very fortunate to figure out what I love most in life and figuring out ways to put those things together. When I was in uni, I figured out that my love for nature and landscape could be combined with art in some capacity. And really, I haven't stopped exploring that combination of how to put these two things together since. So that's been years of figuring out how these two things can relate to one another. Having that focus, I think, has really helped me it's kind of given me the reason and the purpose, the drive for making, because I just want to use art as a way to express myself, help other people express themselves, as a way to connect to nature, and as a way, I suppose, to learn from nature and bring that into living more creatively. The second thing I wanted to say on this, and I'll leave it here for now, 
is that the things I create, I really want them to evolve with me as I age. And I want to continue to experiment and try new things and continually learn. So I really hope that I continue to learn new skills, new techniques that might mean doing making things outside of painting. I really hope I get more time to create textiles, to create three-dimensionally, all of these things. And although it most likely will be through the lens of landscape and nature exploration, I'm sure that the outputs that I make, the actual art pieces, will look very different over time. And I think that is to be celebrated and I really look forward to whatever is coming in the creative unknown. I'd love to open this question up to you as well. And I would absolutely adore to hear your stories on anything that helps you find your own voice or figure out who you are as an artist or who you want to be as an artist, because I think it's always something we're working towards. And equally, how you landed on making the things that you make now and maybe what you want to make next. I don't know, I find this question so exciting. Before we wrap up this video, I quickly wanted to share two reflections, things I have learned from these paintings behind me. I am feeling so excited, so energised by these paintings. I've literally just put down the brushes, so hopefully you can get some of this enthusiasm through the camera. But reflection number one was listening to my gut and pushing past a nice painting and towards something to learn from. By this I mean I'm talking about the painting in the middle, painting process number two. It was sitting after day two of painting at a very lovely, very nice stage, but I feel like I hadn't really learned enough from it. It wasn't energising me, it was just like, hmm, that's a pretty landscape. Whereas I really wanted to feel something from it, um, you know, get some energy from it. So I decided to push past the fear of potentially ruining what was a nice painting in the spirit of learning or experimenting more. And I'm so, so glad I did. And this leads me on to reflection too. I wouldn't have been able to push past that, that nice painting and towards something fresh without having done painting three, which was the fully abstract painting. And I am so excited by this painting, I can't tell you. I don't know, the colors are saying something to me it's maybe not done, I don't really know, but I know that I'm feeling excited by it. There's something here to learn from, which is great. And I wouldn't have been able to unlock painting two without having done painting three. I was working across those two <clears throat> on the third day of painting, kind of simultaneously. I did this painting and then went to this one. And whilst I was painting this, I was looking at this one and going, oh, that portion of layering is really interesting. How can I bring that into this piece? I love how I've combined those two colours next to each other. How can I bring that into this piece? All of that ramble to say, don't be afraid to take references from other paintings that you've done. Maybe if you've done something cool in your sketchbook and you've done a different painting over there that you really like, have them out as you're working because you never know where your kind of creative breakthrough is going to come from. And sometimes it can be found in your work that you've already done. Uh, that was certainly the case for me today um, and it's definitely where all of this kind of breakthrough came from. Okay, ramble over, that's what I've learned. I'm feeling so excited and what else do I need to tell you? Number one, I am distilling all of the information from this video into a blog post over on Substack. Um, if you'd like to follow me over there, it's just the outdoor sketchbook. I often kind of distill different points from my videos into notes so it's easier just to kind of skim through if you want to have that kind of resource and I'll be popping up some photographs of these finished paintings as well over there so that you can see them in a bit more detail and that leads me on to saying a huge thank you to my amazing Patreon members your support and generosity really make this channel possible so a huge huge thank you
As always, thank you to you for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you've made it this far, consider giving it a wee like and hitting the subscribe button. It really helps get these videos out further to other people that might enjoy them too. I'll leave you there, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you outside.